Hello cave dwellers, the market seems to be flooded with this super cheap USB joystick board. It's for converting your arcade controls to USB. Does it work? What does it do? And does it belong in your arcade build? Let's find out. My particular board came off of Amazon and it arrived in this packet, but being such a generic piece of kit, yours could arrive packaged differently. But uh, we should have the same contents. And mine comes with the board itself, a Sanwa joystick connector cable, 12 cables to connect your micro switches to the board, and the USB cable to connect it all up to your computer, Raspberry Pi or whatever you're plugging this into. By my measurements the board comes in at 8.5 by 3.5 centimeters. On it you'll find inputs for 12 micro switch buttons, the USB cable connector, the Sanwa cable connector, further inputs for the joystick up down left and right, and additional inputs to enable auto fire, turbo fire and uh, joystick input mode. The mode switching between regular joystick input and point of view hat input as detected by Windows uh, de depending on what you have selected. So as I said earlier this board is sold under the guise of many different names but you can identify it by this game control board right in on the back, the word both Sega written in the middle or at the top left there's CY822A which is the part number. If you're using a Sanwa branded joystick you can use the included cable although it is very short. All other joysticks and buttons will use the included cables which handily break out a single input into the ground and the signal cable to plug straight on your micro switches. Something to consider when plugging the cables into the board is that they go in very firmly which is great when they're in but it takes quite a tug to pull them out again and I have on occasion pulled the entire plastic surround off of the board with the cable. So when testing to make sure you're plugged into the right ports I recommend you just rest it gently, test it and then push it in fully when you're happy you've got the right port. No such complaints with the USB cable however which measures in at 1.5 meters and it includes this handy lip on the cable so that you can get a neat finish when mounting it inside a case or existing joystick. One small snag I had was that the connectors were too small for my micro switches but they're easily increased in size with a flathead screwdriver and of course it's better to have uh, small connectors that you can increase in size than uh, large connectors that you can't decrease should you have the smaller connector type micro switch. Installation then is really that simple just connect all of the cables up to your micro switches and plug them into the board. For the purpose of testing today I'm uh, using this old warhorse my competition pro joystick. It contains standard micro switches for the joystick and two leaf switches for the buttons. The case sadly is too small to house the board and make this a permanent fixture but it's fine for the purpose of this review. And yes I've kept the original cable to make this a uh, fully reversible modification so don't worry competition pro lovers. Let's plug it in then to the USB port and uh, we'll test it out with a couple of games in the MAME emulator. No additional drivers are needed in Windows 10 and it's immediately detected as a generic USB joystick. The properties show that the joystick axes are detected as X and Y axes rather than point of view hat and the buttons are detected and work correctly as expected. I then hooked up an additional button just to see what the mode button does when pressed and as you can see it changes the joystick function to point of view hat. I don't need this functionality but uh, you may be able to think of some circumstances where you would need to do that. Finally and most importantly how does it play? Well as I always say the key to good arcade hardware is whether or not you actually notice it and sure enough there was no noticeable delay in its use, no sticky buttons or ghosting of inputs and in situations where fast twitch reactions were required I was happy that it was a lack of reactions on my part rather than any hardware at fault resulting in my death. Gallagher played well then as did a quick blast on Outrun. So in conclusion if you don't need the programmable features of say Ultimark's iPack input controller you can save yourself a lot of money. Like most hardware that concentrates on one feature and one feature only it does it and it does it well. And as a bonus it does it at an extremely low price. I've seen these things for as low as $2.99 on eBay. My only criticism really would be that the cables are too short which limits your mounting options unless you buy some longer cables to go with it. A small external case would be nice too to allow for the conversion of joysticks like this Competition Pro but the likelihood is you'll be mounting it in a larger case. So yeah, don't let the low price put you off and if you happen to make a controller using this board leave a comment and let me know how you got on with that. As usual if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and come back soon for similar content. 
Take care, cave dwellers. <laughs>